Morgan, the executive director of Health at Piedmont Healthcare. Thanks for coming back and talking to us again here. So yeah, let's absolutely. talk about this. How is the weather events, which are so far from perhaps where people live, impacting the nationwide blood uh, supply nationwide and, and kind of drawing it down? It's interesting to think of how we're also interconnected. So how can one event in one area of the country impact someone in another area of the country? And that's because we all depend on this collection of blood with the blood bank. And really, when we're collecting blood, it lasts about 42 days. Platelets last only five days. And we have these big events. It disrupts donors. They're not able to get to sites or they're focused on other things other things that are related to the disaster. And just one or two days of a decrease in donors starts to impact our supply. Most hospitals like to keep at least four or five days of uh, blood supply on hand just to feel comfortable, unable to do that when these disasters occur. Are there other medical necess necessities that are needed and that are being impacted? You know, that is such a great question because the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Blood obviously comes in plastic bags. It just doesn't, you know, come loose. So in any of these IV bags where blood is contained, these IV bags, these plastic bags also is how we uh, dispense um, saline, meaning fluid for a person's body, or even medicines like antibiotics, which can be really life-saving. All of that can be impacted. And then we have to have judicious use and decision-making and prioritization when we are in short supply of not only blood and blood products, but the packaging that it comes in and the packaging that we use in the hospitals as well. So right now, is that impacting the care that people can get at hospitals right now? So far, it's not impacting, but we're running on a shorter leash. So we like to see four or five days. We may be around one or two days. And when you think about that, you can have one patient, a seriously impacted uh, patient, come in and drain all of your blood supply on that one patient. That's an extreme situation. It's a worst case scenario though, for which we always train and prepare. But a single patient at any time can really impact the blood supply at, at any facility. And Dr. Morgan, it's that time of the year when we start to talk about uh, what's going on in the flu season, so how we protect ourselves out there. So is there an early indication of what this year's flu season's gonna be like and what should we do? We are actually expecting a little bit of a worse flu season this year because we now have three viruses with which we contend. In the, in the past, we've had flu, we've had RSV, now we've got COVID in the mix. Last year, that was a little bit elevated because the, <clears throat> excuse me, the COVID peak was staggered. It didn't occur at the same time as RSV and flu, but this year it looks as if the COVID peak may occur at the same time as flu and RSV, and we may see those hospitalizations increase. Now, that being said, I'm a doctor. This is not an exact science as we predict this. We're taking a look at it. Worst case scenario is if they all happen at the same time. Last year, we sort of dodged the bullet mm -hmm. because it was staggered as they came across the fall and winter seasons. Yeah, we know about not exact sciences mm -hmm. here right. in meteorology. <laughs> but speaking of exact science, the FDA this last month said, you know, some of these over-the-counter decongestants are just trash. Right. Don't use them. So what can people use? It, it, we're probably going to catch a cold, at least one over the, the, the winter. What can they use to provide some relief that will work? Right, besides mom's chicken soup, right, that's a, such a, a great question. And so you're talking about phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is what the FDA ruled against and said, you know what, this actually contains no active ingredients. It really has no efficacy. And so what can you use? You can use products that contain something called pseudoephedrine, which is over the counter, but behind the counter. And the reason for that is it has streak value in making meth. So you have to ask the pharmacy for it, but you do not. You have to ask the pharmacist for it, but you do not need a prescription. And then guanefacin, products that have guanefacin in them as well um, are still effective. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Jane Morgan, the Executive Director of Health at Piedmont Healthcare, for joining us today. We Thank you. It. Thank you.